You're probably all familiar with the concept of the anti-hero. It is, in fact, a literary trope that goes back hundreds of years and has been used in literature in many instances. Of course, in the modern context, you're probably most familiar with anti-heroes from movies and comic books. Some examples of this might be Batman versus Superman. Superman is sort of the Boy Scout. He does everything by the books. He tries to be the best guy possible. Batman, although a good guy, he doesn't take life, has his own code, and kind of does things by his own rules within his own framework. A more extreme example of this might be Frank Castle, the Punisher in Marvel Comics. And the Punisher is a guy who regularly unalives people in pursuit of justice, in pursuit of punishing criminals, hence his name. And the Punisher, of course, stands in polar opposition to somebody like Steve Rogers, Captain America, who again is a Boy Scout, does everything by the books. So an anti-hero usually kind of does the things that a hero might, at least in some capacity, but he also deviates a great deal from what you might expect in a proper hero. He's not striving to embody all the qualities of a hero. He does his own thing, and oftentimes, in as much as he is a hero, it's being a hero by coincidence more than anything else, because he has his own goals, his own pursuits, and his own terms of service, so to speak, that he has to live by. Now, believe it or not, there's also the concept of the anti-role model, but it's not exactly a one-to-one parallel with the anti-hero. You see, as I said, the anti-hero sometimes does things, quote-unquote, the right way, or at the very least, his actions lead in a direction that might somehow resonate with people, or at least partly parallel the outcomes of the actions of proper heroes. In this historic usage, the anti-role model is basically always bad, exclusively bad. He's the kind of guy that you might see in 80s or 90s cartoons that's meant to dissuade young people, children, youths from engaging in dangerous or harmful behavior. They might drink alcohol, they might consume drugs, they might regularly play truant at school if it's a high school situation, and generally they display a lifestyle that you ought not to emulate because of its potential harmful effects on your life downstream when you're older. And that's how it's been used in television and media. Although given the mores of our times, these days you don't really see much of that anymore. Still, as it's an older term, I don't really want to use the term in the traditional sense. I suppose I'm co-opting it. We're creating my own version of, we'll call it Thinking Abe's anti-role model for the sake of discussion and argument. And I want to make the argument here that Asmongold is essentially the perfect anti-role model, and I'll explain what I mean by that, in that he shares a lot of the qualities and traits that used to be portrayed as very negative and were meant to dissuade people from living in a certain fashion, so as to prevent people from copying or imitating the behaviors of said anti-role model. And in this sense, Asmongold fits rather neatly, almost perfectly, into the classic definition archetype or trope. And this isn't a criticism, it's just an observation, I'm sure he would confirm it himself. He has terrible hygiene, showers once every couple of months or weeks, I don't know the exact number. His house is filled with mold, there are insects such as cockroaches crawling about, there are rats and mice flourishing in his abode. He doesn't pay attention particularly to his physical health, he drinks copious amounts of Coca-Cola, and eats a fair bit of junk food, and in fact, if you didn't know this, the reason why he became a streamer was because he neglected his dental hygiene so badly years ago that when he went to the dentist, the dentist said that the work he required to deal with his teeth essentially rotting out of his mouth would cost somewhere around $50,000, which then motivated him to become a streamer and eventually became the wealthy, famous Asmongold we all know. But that was simply born of a motivation to have to pay for the dentist bills. In short, he displays a lot of the behaviors of the classic anti-role model, a way of life that nobody should strive to emulate, a way of life that people usually are told to reject. And for the record, I don't think you should neglect your dental hygiene to the point where your teeth are rotting out of your mouth, and he wouldn't either. Famously, or infamously, depending on how you look at it, Asmongold regularly tells his followers and people online to not live their lives like his, because in many ways his life is both a figurative and literal mess. So yes, in this sense of the classic anti-role model trope, Asmongold captures this quite well. But in contrast to the older trope, which is exclusively negative, I want to attach some positive qualities to the anti-role model. And indeed, Asmongold has many of these. And in some sense, 
this type of anti-role model that I'm presenting to you is much more akin to the anti-hero, which is to say for the anti-hero, there's some positive outcomes associated with his behavior, even if he's not actively striving towards those outcomes. In my version of the anti-role model, embodied by Asmund Gold, he too achieves some excellent results despite not actively striving for such things. And contained within the word anti-role model, there are role model-esque qualities to be found in Asmund Gold's life and behavior. I think the thing that one should admire most about Asmund Gold is his lack of care. Now, of course, to some degree, that's negative because, generally speaking, you shouldn't let your teeth rot out of your mouth. That stems from a lack of care for his physical well-being. But he also doesn't care about the world thinks about him. A lot of people misconstrue this and think, oh, the reason why Asmund Gold doesn't care about what people think or doesn't care about things is because he has FU money and he can do whatever he wants now. But he's always been this way. The way he became wealthy was becoming a streamer, which was because he needed to pay for massive dental intervention to save what few teeth remained in his mouth because that would have cost $50,000. So he's always been lackadaisical. He's always not cared. And this is his greatest strength. The fact that he walks his own path on his own terms, does not listen to what everyone else tells him to do, his superpower is that he truly doesn't care, which has both positive and negative side effects. The negative ones have already been mentioned, horrible hygiene, poor health, general neglect, but it also means he doesn't care about what other people think, and he's not trying to set an example for people. He's just a dude living on his own terms, and despite that, or perhaps because of it, depending on your perspective, he has become fabulously wealthy, and lives a good life. Now contrast that with quote-unquote role models of today, mostly gurus, who are running around telling men what to do with their lives, the money they should earn, the way they should look, the way they should dress, that they should hit the gym. You'll never hear Asim Gold say any of these things. He might say, it's a good idea. I don't do it, but it's a good idea. He might say something along those lines, but he's never going to axiomatically proclaim to the world, thou shalt. And in this sense, Asmund Gold, although he doesn't intend to be, after all, he's an anti-role model, is a better role model than the vast majority of people out there online. Gurus who are trying to hijack people's attention in this attention economy in an effort to inflate their own egos and inflate their own pockets with cash. You'll never see Asmund Gold do any of that. And yet, despite that, he's fabulously wealthy, he's successful, and he lives a good life, all the while flouting every convention an expectation that one might have of what constitutes a successful man and what a successful man should be or ought to be. Asmund Gold doesn't do ought to be's, he simply is. This is the fundamental problem with gurus. Traditional gurus, as we've become accustomed to know them on YouTube, are basically salesmen who offer cookie-cutter solutions to complex problems. The complex problem is your life, especially if you're a young man, and it is very tempting to have somebody come along and say, take the following steps, be it dress a certain way, do a certain job, go to the gym, and then your life will be good. And it makes perfect sense why young men find that appealing. A, they're very young, and when you're very young, you're more susceptible to certain types of suggestions, and you're green around the ears regardless, and, and so you don't have exposure to ideas, and your brain isn't fully developed. The second component here is a simple facet of human existence. People, broadly speaking, like being told what to do. They don't like thinking for themselves, I'm no different, it really depends on the thing. If it's something that I'm interested in, that I have knowledge of, then I like to think for myself. But if it's not, I would prefer a set of instructions and just do it. I recently wanted to mod a game that would have required me to learn C Sharp in order to do so. I have zero interest in coding languages, but I wanted to mod the game. You could say it's a means to an end. What I really wanted was a set of instructions on how to do X, Y, and Z. This is because I don't find the subject matter compelling or interesting, so I fit into the category too. We all enjoy, although the degree of it depends on the individual, at times, abdicating our ability to think for ourselves and handing over that ability to somebody else. And when you're young and lost in the world, that is what you're looking for above all else. But the reality is, is that there is no one path set out for all which is why you have to take the good things along with the bad from individuals. You have to look for the nuggets of wisdom. There isn't a perfect blueprint for life, which is why, at the end of the day, Asmund Gold is such a fantastic anti-role model. He has his qualities, his negative ones, but he also has a host of positive qualities. I already mentioned his indifference towards the world, his lack of caring, but he's also highly intelligent, and he's a savvy businessman, 
who's learned his trade, i.e. streaming, to a T. And you can see that success, in as much as you're striving for success, of the same sort that Asmin Gold has achieved, or other people with more conventional notions of success, it isn't always a package deal. You have to use your brain, observe, listen, and think. Separate out the bad and take the good. But if you're looking for universals, if you're looking for an all-knowing guru, you're never going to find that, which is why such gurus are neither anti-role models nor role models. As a young person, you can learn a lot more from somebody like Asmund Gold, despite his flaws, or indeed because of those flaws, because you can also see the other side of Asmund Gold, his success, his ability to navigate the world on his own terms, his incredible knowledge of streaming, and this is why I ultimately think that Asmund Gold is the perfect anti-role model which is why I say we can only hope to be as lucky as Asmongold in this respect. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Many special thanks to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are the best. You keep the channel alive. Without you, this channel could not exist. Equal thanks to my donors on PayPal. As for everybody else, if you can leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, all that YouTube jazz would be much appreciated. If I'm still alive, I'll check you out then. Until then, may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye for now. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.